One of the things that I love about stretching and thinking about mobility, flexibility, is that if you speak to people that don't know much about training, who haven't invested as much time as we have perhaps, uh, they view getting the splits as this extreme thing that's basically, I don't know, as impossible as a six plate squat, whatever. If I said to somebody, <coughs> listen, I'm going to uh, squat 300 kilos, they're like, no, you're not. Um, because it seems like it's an absurd number, like 300 kilos. It sounds like the weight of a car, right? Even though it's not, but it just sounds like it's very, very heavy. Uh, in uh, recent weeks, as you guys know, since getting this thing, since getting sick, I've been stretching a lot, absolutely a lot. And a few people in my life have learned about this stretching business of mine. And they're asking me, Ivan, I saw a video of you the other day, you know, some of my colleagues, what the hell are you doing with that stretching thing? What, what, what is that? <laughs> Why are you doing it? What's the point of that? And I simply reply, you know, uh, I want to do splits. And then they often ask, like, where'd you get the machine? How much is the machine? Is the machine going to make it easier to, to get the splits? You know, I don't think you can get the splits because you're like in your mid-30s now. And people don't usually learn how to do splits in their mid-30s. Like your structure has changed. It's stronger, right? That's what age does. Your bones become uh, sh uh, heavier, stronger. Uh, your ligaments, your tendons become stiffer, less, less, uh, less flexible, less elastic. So this is why our athleticism starts to decrease because it doesn't have that elasticity anymore. But you generally get stronger. I think peak strength is around 40 or something like that. 45, whatever. Like in, team, in terms of like some strength uh, expressions. Obviously, athleticism has a lot to do with how elastic your body is, how... How, how, how much energy uh, is stored in those tendons. Like if you think about athleticism, all I ever think about is jumping and running. Like that's kind of what athleticism means to me. You know, how, how can you jump? Are you a powerful athlete? So speed tends to kind of decrease with age, but strength doesn't. You know, I think around 40, you see some of these strongman competitors, like they're like around 40 and they're like, you know, still very, very strong. Whereas let's say soccer, uh, you know, football, whatever you want to call it, basketball basically by the time you're 31 32 like the, your best athletic years are behind you essentially you can still be an effective player using your skill and your smarts and experience but in terms of jumping over people like you know it's it gets harder and harder as you go along uh but flexibility a lot of people think that flexibility is kind of in that same box as athleticism like you know you can't you become stiffer as you get older not looser uh, if you think about the spectrum of uh, how we age, you know, I remember my, my babies, you know, when they were born, man, like you could literally get that leg and just like, just any which way they could the splits, they can do whatever, but they can't stand up. They can't walk. They can't support themselves, but they're really, really flexible. So, you know, they have all this like flexibility, mobility, but they have no stability. They have no strength. They can't even support their own body weight. And so in this spectrum of we get stronger, like you turn one, you start walking maybe just before one, uh, you start running soon after, let's say one and a half or whatever, <clears throat> you start running and blah, 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 blah. And then as you kind of get stronger and stronger and your frame starts to grow and fill out, theoretically speaking, that strength, uh, you know, comes in and you trade away some of that mobility and flexibility unless you really work on it. Because that's what strength and stability does. You become less mobile. Because if you think somebody super, super, super mobile, they're probably not going to have the best deadlift numbers, the best squat numbers. Because uh, it's, you know, you want like tension, you want strength, stability, you know, concrete poured over your joints to support this weight. It doesn't make sense for you to be doing splits, you know, uh, having super, super long muscles for that goal. It's interesting. It's interesting we speak to somebody like no, Ivan, like that's, you know, you won't be able to do that. Like it's going to take you a long, long time. You're probably never going to get there. So I hear these things and I can kind of uh, think about it with them. And I find it really enticing, really motivating because I believe I can get that. And there's nothing that can stop me from getting that. Nothing. I believe there's nothing. Whereas with a 300 kilo squat, there's a lot of things that can stop. Because most people that squat 300 kilos, the way I want to squat at ATG, high bar, 
they are generally enhanced in some way, right? They are using some hormones or whatever. Uh, so that's kind of like 300 kilo squat and splits. Let's, let's uh, put them on the same level. You can get to the elite level, you know, lower body mobility. That's what I kind of think elite level is doing splits this way and that way. Elite level mobility, uh, uh, flexibility without anything. You don't need to shoot yourself up with anything. You don't need to do anything other than put the work in. That's really, really cool with me. Whether with 300 kilo squat, I mean, there are some people out there that do it, uh, but they usually tend to be quite heavier uh, or they tend to be using stuff, uh, which is whatever, you know. Uh, that's okay to them, but for me, that's not even a, like I'll never consider that, that sort of thing. So I can't access that part to get to that goal. But I keep thinking to myself, okay, I really like the thought of doing splits. What's stopping me? There's no doubt there. Do this every freaking day for the next year and you're there. You're there. There's nothing else, man. What are we talking about? Oh, no, no, no. With the squat, you see, you have to have a specific program. Ivan, you, you probably need to be 120 kilos body weight. You probably need some knee sleeves and a belt and you probably need to squat high and maybe drop that bar lower from the high bar to a low bar. And then maybe you can get it in like five years time. Okay, so that's a whole lot of asterisks associated with this goal of mine. Or you can probably do it at 100 kilos, but then you have to take some, you know, take some stuff and jeopardize your health and upset some of the hormonal profile that you have. Probably shave some years off your life. Jesus Christ, that goal all of a sudden seems not very enticing to me at all. If that's what is going to be required, 20 kilos on my frame or do drugs I'm sorry but that's not enticing that doesn't mean that that goal of mine is now gone it's just I, I, I look at it and I'm like I don't know if I can get there uh, without really damaging my health in some form of way like I think me adding another 20 kilos on my frame whichever way you look at that I don't think that's going to be very healthy for me um, and you know you think to yourself well you're young listen man I've seen a fair few guys have heart attacks in their 30s Okay, I'm not saying that I'm going to have a heart attack in my 30s, but if I go on this crazy goal of putting 20 kilos on, so like 45 pounds on, man, that's 240 pound Ivan, 250 pounds. That's very, very heavy. And you know, you, I, I can think of a bunch of uh, things that, that are really bad for it. Um, your sleep is going to go to shit. You're probably going to get sleep apnea. Uh, with the sleep going shit, you're probably going to be really, really tired. You're probably going to be relying on stimulants to get through your day. Uh, you're going to probably be fat. Like you can't support 120 kilos lean weight as a natural. For me, at six foot, six one, 120 kilos lean, full muscles, that ain't happening. Dude. So you're talking about somebody that's going to be like 30% body fat, 40%. That's not interesting me, uh, but mobility, elite level mobility, everyone can get there, everyone. And if you're somebody that's, I don't know, in the, in the ballpark of, I want to challenge myself and I want to reach an elite level uh, status in something, I don't think there's an asterisk associated with mobility flexibility. I simply don't. I think it's just how many years do you want to put in? And I reckon you can get there eventually. There's no buts. You can get to splits, put the work in, simple as that. There's nothing stopping you. What, what's going to stop you? Your body will adapt to these longer positions. I feel my body already ad adapting. I just came from out there, did some yoke walks, uh, yoke, uh, whatever, holding the bar for time. Uh, then I did some, I'll show you now. Uh, once again, really, really high box squats, trying to like explode, trying to put every, all my mind into the bar. Really, really short ranges of motion. Really trying to kind of uh, not stress my body in that way. I'm still kind of nasally, as you can guys probably hear. And I want to, hopefully tomorrow I'll wake up and I'll feel clear again so I can hit 10 by 10 again. Really bodybuilding kind of parameters. Put some, you know, real volume into those adductors. Really feel those glutes again and really stress the system and then wait another four, five days to recover and, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, so really, really short ranges of motion followed by really, really maximum ranges of motion stretching. Um, I don't know, man. Like, I I don't know. Some of you guys might be thinking to this, like, yeah, but 
why would you want to do splits dude that's not my thing that, that's cool like everyone has a different thing they want to train for uh, but I think I, I can't see a negative for splits I honestly cannot see a negative uh, I'll be sitting here right now anyway with the kids running around playing with them why not see here on this machine or even if you don't have a machine sit with your legs apart and feel a bit of a stretch it's just such a small commitment to, to, to reach elite level stuff. I don't know. I could, be, I could be wrong. Maybe this split journey is going to take me five years, although I doubt it because I am pretty extreme in my mindset. I'll, I love doing stuff every day uh, to my detriment. You know, Some of you guys have said, oh, Ivan, if you squatted every other day, you probably better get better results. Maybe. Possibly. Physically, yes. You know, but I've always explained why I like doing everyday stuff. There's many, many benefits in other areas. You know, mental, spiritual, emotional. I know all that fluffy shit that you guys don't want to hear, but dude, I feel great when I train every day. And that greatness <laughs> permeates all the other aspects of my life. Uh, so to say, okay, you would have had another 10 or 15 kilos on the, on the squat, but you would have been a little bit less happy. Mm, doesn't really interest me that much. Uh, splits? You can't overdose on it. You can do it anywhere. You don't need drugs. It doesn't impact your health in any negative way. You feel better. You walk easier. Less expenditure when you walk about because there's less tension in your hips. Life is easier. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Elite level flexibility enhances your life. Elite level strength decreases your health. craziest thing is we all not all i don't want to say it's heavy words right but let's say we all idolize all of these freaks out there who are really 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 strong who are on high doses of drugs amassing massive massive uh, followings amassing uh, lots of uh, support from the community but we don't think to, to ourselves that what we are supporting and what we are helping perpetuate is not health what we are supporting once we, we watch something and you might think but i'm just watching yeah you're watching but the, if everyone says i'm watching then you're supporting you cannot give somebody your time and not support them if you're spending five hours a week watching somebody you are supporting them you are supporter if you go buy a ticket and watch the local football game you are supporting that event you can't go and not support and so then you have to ask yourself okay me supporting this is this a good net gain for society? I don't know. Some of you guys might not be at the stage where you have your kids uh, yet, uh, but I have children. And, and for me, when I see my kids, I wouldn't want them to take the, the path that some of these guys are taking, which are idols of the game, the top of the fitness game, right? The top channels. Who are these people? And what are they doing? What do they stand for? You're like, wow, that's a really impressive feat of strength. And I agree with you. It is. But let's not be stupid. That is not a natural expression of strength. And now the degeneracy of the world is such a level that the, really the people who are at the top and who are getting massive, massive amount of support is simply degeneracy. People who don't have values and ethics and they don't really care. They're here for the dollar, for the money, for the fame. And they don't really care what sort of message they send out. No, that doesn't matter. man. It's about me, man. It's about me. I want all the views. I want a million views every single day. I want exposure. I want brand deals. I want a lot of money. Ferrari, hot chick, mansion. They don't really care about the message that they're sending out. And I, I, I wonder to myself, like I've said this in the past, I reckon all of these people will see life differently once they have the kids of their own. Because when you have kids of your own, you go from being a consumer, being somebody that's just me, 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 what's best for me, muscles me, this me, my car, my house, my chick, blah, 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 blah. And then you have kids and you're like, okay, what's happening to my community? Now, why, why is that the shift? Well, my kids go to the school in this community. My kids go to the park in this community. My kids are going to be exposed to this community. So all of a sudden, I care about the neighbor and that neighbor and that neighbor. I care about if somebody's naughty on the street, doing burnouts in front of my yard. I've got kids in my front yard. Do I want some hoon going 100 k's an hour down the road? That's a problem all of a sudden. But it was just me? I don't care. I'll move out of the way. That's fine, man. It's cool. Sick burnout, right? Sick, man. 
But when you have kids, you think about the world differently. And all of these people who are, you know, freely talking about drugs, freely, you know, showing off the power of drugs. Man, look at the dosage I did, man. Here it is. And this is where you get chicks everywhere following blah, 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 blah. They might not be telling you exactly take the drugs, but really they're showing off what the drugs are able to get you in life. And so it's like a subliminal message of don't take this. Please don't take this and have all of this. Don't do it. It's the wrong thing to do. And some of these guys do that. They're like, I really discourage you to take the drugs. As he's sitting next to a mansion with a Ferrari and chicks everywhere in a mansion. And the young 16 year old's like, he doesn't want me to have all of that. Why wouldn't I want to have all of that? I was 16, I was 17, I was 18, I was 20. I remember those feelings, man. And I know exactly how it feels to be dropped by a chick, heartache, feel that uh, feeling of I'm not good enough. Screw that. Where the hell is the next vial, man? I want to shoot that shit straight. Thousand milligrams of test a week. Let's go. Oh, well, look at Ivan. That poor sucker hasn't had a PI in months. Months. My last PR was a month ago, uh, front squat. Before that, all I've really been PRing is really the front squat for the last year. Other than that, my last squat PR was September last year. So years it's been since I've been a, a back squat PR. Embarrassing. I can't tolerate that. This is really bad for my channel. My channel is falling down, man. Let me just sneakily take a bit of Psalms, take a bit of tests. Not tell anyone. I hit a 220, 230, 245 this year. Sick. Ivan's shit. Ivan knows what he's talking about because he has resolved. Channel goes up. Let's follow Ivan because he has resolved. See what I mean? In a way, I, I kind of like, I know this is going to sound dumb, but in a way, I like the fact that I don't have any PRs because I know for a fact that, that is, for the majority of people out there, that is the normal. It is not normal to always just be smashing PRs and, and, and going better and better and better. We all plateau and my plateau has been well documented, right? You know exactly what it is. Everyone wants, do you think I don't want to have gains? But in, in a way, I'm kind of glad that it's been this way in, in, in like a, not a private way, but in a public way, uh, you know, for the greater good is like, here is a guy that's documenting no progress, documenting the struggle of it. Because I, you know, I want people to see in social media, guys who do not improve. Now think about how dumb that is that I just said. I'm going to make videos for the next five years and I'm not going to improve a little bit. Right? Isn't that a different message? Because everyone out there that's successful, you have to improve every week, bro. Every week. In the first year, if you don't, if you don't deadlift six plates, you screwed up. You screwed up. And so the 99.99% .99 of people out there who are training, they're like, I'm a shit. I'm a shit. I'm a piece of shit. After a year of, of, of deadlifting, I only have 130 kilo deadlift. Uh, I'm a piece of shit. No, look at Ivan, man. He's been training for years straight. He hasn't improved either. Oh, okay. So there's Ivan. He hasn't improved. He works really, really hard, but he hasn't improved. Okay, so we, yeah, that's normal. You know, so maybe there's some normal to see out there. It's not just freaking everyone's, everyone's got the best genetics. No, bro. Everyone's just is investing in drugs. Oh, man. Anyway. <coughs> so I think it's healthy to have other avenues to explore. Let's all get splits. Let's all get splits and improve our mobility in the squat. I'm sure that if I can do splits this way, and if I can do splits that way, the ability to get to the ATG squat is going to be easier. No doubt about it. And if you can get the uh, ATG squat effortlessly, even more effortlessly than you are right now, it's going to benefit your strength. That's what I think. I could be wrong. I mean, I don't know, you know, obviously if you just purely go flexibility training for a year straight and you don't train, you're probably going to get weaker. But I'm trying to marry up like, a, like, a, like, a, like I showed you, 180 kilos, really high box squats, super maximum weights, right? With stretching. Let's see what that happens. I know for a fact that I'm going to be able to get to the splits one day. I don't know if I'll get 300, but I know for a fact splits are possible. It's easily repeatable. There's freaking 45 year old women out there who can do splits. After kids, office workers. They just go to yoga every day. What the hell? I can't do it, man. I can't. And I will. And that's really cool for me. It's really cool because I don't need to take anything. I don't need to sabotage my health to get the splits. And that thing is really refreshing to me. It's so refreshing because when I watch a channel that has somebody that is really, really flexible, 
I'm like, here is one of me. One of us is out there. He's a guy that can do splits. And he's not, he's not juiced up. And I, I don't have to wonder. I don't have to wonder, is this guy taking what compound? When I see somebody squat six plates, always a part of me is like, but easy natural, but easy. I see somebody do splits, I'm like, 100% I can get there without anything. Okay, now talk to me. Talk to me what you did. But when somebody is talking about squats and deadlifts, I'm always like, mm, really? You did RDLs only for six months and you improved your deadlift. Only. Is that what you did? And you want me to do RDLs? But tell me the true story. Oh, oh you had 500 of tests. Or what a, what, a, what a little thing you left out. And now you're writing a program about RDLs. But you've taken that little omission out about the testosterone. <laughs> it doesn't matter about testosterone. You just do the RDLs like a numbskull. I mean, I'm just telling you now where the origin of me screwing all programming and be like, I'm going to go my way. Because all of these guys that are like really, really smart guys. Oh, look at these guys. Worked out a really beautiful program. In the background, he's running drugs. My friend, if you don't do anything and just eat potato chips and, and play video games and get on gear, you're going to get stronger, more stronger than somebody that's gone to the gym for the same period of time and not take any, anything. This is the power of the drugs. You are going to be, have better progress on drugs and not train than somebody who's training and not on drugs. That tells you everything. So that guy that's giving you the program, just, man, whatever. I don't care what numbers he's doing. He's on gear. And because he's on gear, it does not apply to you. I don't care what exercise he's using. I don't care what it is. Unless you're 100% certain that this man is natural, pinch of salt. I, I, I can't 100% believe what you're saying because... I don't know what happened there, bro. Because if you just take more gear, everything works. Even eating chips and sitting on the couch, that works as well. So the exercise thing that you're talking about does not matter because you can just up the dose and anything works. Even the couch works. This is my frustration. But flexibility, purity, clear, clear sights. Everything is clear. Okay, you want me to stretch your hip flexes three times a day. It worked for you? Done done I'll buy that program I will because I know for a fact there's nothing else to it there's nothing else to it this is why I'm kind of hooked on this right now and I really am hooked on this and when I tell you I'm doing this every day I am freaking doing this every day uh, obviously less when I'm, when, I, when I'm on work days but I make sure before every day before sleep you know after training sessions I'm here banging this out and it feels great because I know I can get to the elite level just doing this. And that's a really good feeling. It just, I think all of this shows you my frustration uh, with the fitness industry. And, you know, all, all luck and all, um, you know, goodness towards the people that have all the attention nowadays. But it seems to me all the people at the top seem to be drugs. Uh, who are open or uh, who are not open. That's what it seems like to me. And I'm like, man, all these top guys in this field that I call fitness seem to be on gear. And there's good evidence that LeBron is on gear. There is good evidence that Michael Jordan is on gear. There's very good evidence that Dwight Howard was on gear. And these are the idols. Everybody's on drugs that I look up to. Ugh. <sighs> I need to take up golf or something. That's probably a better thing. Well, I know nobody around here is taking drugs. Or do I? <sighs> Appreciate you guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.